I made this earlier. It's just basics for competitive gaming, FPS gaming, and CS and Valorant. So, so each round is kind of like a story. It's the way I like to, to word it. So anytime you're in a in a ranked game, a scrim, whatever, it doesn't really matter. You can automatically dissect what play style you think the other team is gonna have. So if they have like three duelists, you're gonna assume they're aggressive, right? It's pretty obvious. So if they have Rage Jet Reyna plus a Breach, you're gonna assume they're gonna, they wanna fight this control. So automatically before you even get into the game, your IGL should be thinking about how, what kind of pacing he wants to do. So that's kind of step one, right? This is how at least I like to think. So if they're, and then also if there's a more uh, utility based comp like Viper, Harbor, Killjoy, where they're probably going to be more passive. So if you look at this comp, right, let's let's assume these guys play style. So they have an Omen, a Sky, a Jet, and then they have two defensive characters that are probably going to be the more passive characters on the map. So if you look at this, their A control prime isn't going to be the best because they can, what can they do? They can, Demon One's going to fight, obviously. So Demon One's probably going to push up and then Ethan can flash, Jogamo can flash from here, but what do they do after that? They don't really have like the, the utility to kind of like sit there. So if Fnatic is like, all right, let's play slow game, we can probably try to reclear this. So what can they reclear with? They can reclear with Fade maybe like a Roomba or something. But other than that, they're not that strong. Whereas like if you have a Sky, you can dog this this area and that or drone it, right? So automatically, this is what they should be thinking. Whereas like if you have a Raze here, this is what I was talking about earlier in rank. The, the Raze can prenade this and the Omen can flash here, which makes it very hard for attackers. But if you see how the game goes, I'm pretty sure like they don't really they're not as worried about this because Fnatic likes to do a lot of just set strats off the rip. So you'll see Fnatic doing a lot of just fast C hits, fast B hits. And when they want to fight A, they have Ray satcheling across here to rubble to try to create the space for... So if you're here, that means they have to then look at this angle from this angle or this angle or whatever, right? So that's like step one. Step two, I like to see it as like and increments of uh, when you're attacking. This is main. This document's mainly for attack, by the way. So you have like your first half of attack, so to speak. So then you look and you're dissecting what agents do they have that can disrupt defaults. Like if you think of breach, breach is so annoying because if you're doing any kind of map control, you, get, you can get countered with breach, right? With the stun or the aftershock or whatever. Sage can also just wall off a certain part of the area, which disrupts defaults. Rays can retake with nades. Think split mid, for example. Um, we were talking about this. What abilities do we have to reclear a specific part of the maps? Um, or Haven A. It's kind of similar to these two. Lotus and Haven. They're pretty much like similar pl play styles. So this is what I'm talking about first half. Because no one has ults in the beginning of the game, right? They usually have ults around round 3-4. Round 5. What do we have? We have a lockdown. And we have the Viper's Pit. And on attack, we have Ray's ult. Uh... Astro Divide and another Viper, a Viper Pit. So this is when we first start getting our ults, unless the player's like popping off, right? Um, so like at the beginning of this round, you're on defense and you have to respect these ults. These ults are very strong. What do we think is the most likely outcome of these ults? I'm instantly thinking a C hit because they raise ult to open up the site. And then we have very strong post plant ults in the Viper Pit and the, the Astro Wall. At least that's what I'm instantly thinking. So then you're on defense, and you're like, okay, we have Killjoy ult. We also have Viper Pit. Should we use one of these ults here to counter a C hit? Because that's most likely high percentage, highest percentage chance that they're going to do. Yeah, we probably are going to do that. Let's see what EG does. Okay, instead they just decide to take the fight C with Sky uh, holding a counter flash. So you see, you, see, you can kind of see what they're thinking without even like watching or knowing what's going to happen. You can kind of see what's, what they're thinking, so... Prenades. There's a omen blind there. It's one ways it. Okay, they're using defensive utility now. You can see that they want to fight it. And remember what we talked about at the beginning of this, of this was this area. You can see the freedom they have where they're just, they took it for free because of the Viper wall, right? Instantly he's like, okay, they're probably at least two here. We already have the space A. 
let's just go A. And then Calm is already a step ahead and he just Viper ults it. Now they're now they're like, oh, well we can pivot B. Killjoy's probably there, but Chronicle decides to just counter Viper ult, which is interesting. We do a B fake, we even tap bomb. We call this big on, on look over someone tap the bomb and then fall back. So Chronicle is instantly selling his teammates. Come through tree. There's a little gap here. We're trying to force the opposing Viper out of the out of his ult and to my ult, where he'll be weak and and you know, one shot. Instead, Calm finds a gap and kills two, so it's a good job to Calm. But you can kind of see like how they're thinking. So like each round, you want to just create some kind of plan on what you think they're gonna do with their ults. Because this game is it's Valorant, like everyone it's alt based. It's an alt based game. Same with League of Legends. Same with like other games. Like you have to respect these alts. They're really strong. It's how you, it's literally the biggest part of the game. So basically, you want to make sure you're constantly thinking about this as ideals, or just in general. The way my old coach liked to have it, he's like to have one person that's like kind of just in check for knowing this part of the map. Because ideal, you guys see all this shit. This is a lot of shit for an ideal to be thinking of. It's hard. So you kind of delegate people to specific roles if you want to, which helps a lot. Okay. Um, another, this is irrelevant for now. We're looking at this. Do they like to force an op ASAP? Do they like to pick up the op? Some people prefer to just pick up an operator. If they see the, if they see it on the ground, they'll pick it up. If not, it's okay. And you'll usually see this when an enemy team doesn't have like an op player or like an op agent. So if they don't have a jet, you know, they won't necessarily feel the need to buy an op operator. And that's another point is for an IGL is like, do they have op money? And if they do have op money, uh, what does it mean? And do they also have agents that can kind of get them a deep line? And a deep line is like, for example, so right, you have a Sova Star B and you have a jet op, right? Sova Star here. And he basically, he drones. He drones all the way and he clears this. And your jet walks up and he just holds this angle. This is a deep line, which allows, you know, whoever the hell's on your team to then rotate three to the opposite site because of this fast information. So if they come back B, if they come back B here, he gets one pick and he falls back. And you guys know how annoying it is to play against a jet or op, a, an op that's just constantly taking the next angle. Gets a pick here, falls back, gets a pick here, falls back. Gets a pick here, it's really hard. So that's like a deep line. If you take control of this, for example, which is standard, right? And then you put a camera here and you just sit on the camera, you fall back. This is a deep line. You have information really early, which allows your teammates to rotate really fast. So that's the first half of attack, right? And all this is the story of the first half. So keep that in mind when I refer to the story. Step three, the second half of attack. So that's probably what? It's probably like around this area, like around like eight, nine rounds, I would say. So then you're like, your IGL is thinking, you know, how are they winning rounds? I, when I say we, I mean like, you know, the attackers. How? Are, what sites have we been winning on? So if they're constantly winning A, then that affects how the IGL thinks uh, in the in the next rounds. How are we winning on these sites? Are we losing the post plants or are we easily taking the site? How does this affect their thinking? This round from Fnatic. All right, we got B five v five or was a 5v5, but Durke kind of trolled and just died. Ethan could have died here. It would have been a really hard retake, actually. So actually, not that bad, but... Right, so they get the site for free, basically. They get Bomb Plant. Well, they're about to get Bomb Plant. But say they did get, get the Bomb Plant. They they got the site. They lost the retake. So what does that mean in their, in their mental? They're probably thinking, oh, like the site's easy. This is in theory, by the way. The site is easy to take. We can just keep on hitting B. Like that's how that's literally how some people think. 
and a lot of uh, you can tell by just how people play like how i just think about the game is like we got we got the site for free essentially we just fucked up the post plant or we got the site for free you shouldn't have taken this duel right here because you lost this 50 50 duel like this duel right Durkey saying bro if I got that that win, if I got that kill, then it would have been a free round, which is probably true, actually. But Boaster's like, why are you taking that fight, you dumbass? You know, it's like you gotta understand your teammates, like how they think. And I'm just saying, guys, it's not actually what they were thinking, but it's just like in theory, because some people actually do think like that. Like this used to happen when I was playing back then a lot, where the drone would just clear this. He clears all the way out here. This is when the drone was lasting very long too. Clears all this shit. He doesn't see anything tiles and see anything peaking CT. Jet's like, all right, I'm gonna get a free line here again with an op. I have a free deep line again. We have 4A. Instantly. It's so good. It's so strong. It's so hard to play against. You guys know how it feels. So why not do it again? So like the IG going back to like what the IGL has to think is have they gotten any deep lines in the previous rounds easily? So what are you doing on attack? You need, make, you need to make sure that you you kill the drone and at least pressure it back beam in. Because otherwise it's going to be too hard. Then this next step, have we, have we been playing faster or slower to win rounds? So if you see how Fnatic plays, I feel like when I watch them play, Booster likes to call A hits, B hits, and C hits. As dumb as that sounds, it's very easy in this game to have a good execute. With these space craters and jet, sky uh rays it's very easy to just take the map take the site like you get you guys see how hard it is to defend this shit some people might think oh he's just strat relating he's not strat relating he's actually he knows when to what to call when to call because he trusts his teammate that they're going to create the space for his other teammates it's like when i watch Fnatic play they play very basic they're not doing like orb controls into it you know this or that like they'll all of his teammates understand the game wait we're two off killjoy all two off killjoy what does that mean that means we, we don't want him to easily get this orb because if he gets one kill then he'll have ult for retake a which is very hard so we're going to start three here just to, to deny this orb control right that's exactly what they do it's smart they take control of the thing of the mound. And if we go back to what we said at the very beginning of this game, when we look at their comp, they don't really have a good comp for fighting this. So Fnatic at any point in the round can just walk up and do an A hit from right in, in their faces because they took this control. So they kind of have to play two here. As you can see, they're two there because they lost this information. And they also lost this information. This round's very hard for defense. Very hard. Let's see what happens. And they hit. They're retake it because they lost mount control. You can see their post plant. Look at their post plant. Three, one. They're not even playing in the site because they have a suck. And they're probably playing for flanks now because the booster came back uh, from mount or, or B. And they're thinking. Uh, because we took this earlier, this control, and we had A for free. We got bomb plant for free, literally. Like, there was a guy here. That, that was it. We're going to assume they're going to flank us because we lost this map control, and we also don't have a body there. And no one's lurking mid, which I think someone should have lurked mid, personally. Maybe here. That's what I would have called. At least so he can just late flank this. Even if he kills the alarm bot, that's good pressure. Because then this guy has to turn around, or this guy has to respect me. Have you been playing faster or slower? I think this game, with the pacing of how it went, I think they were playing pretty fast. So it's just another like thing that you know an IGL thinks about. Um, if we've been going fast, how are they going to react? So basically, like this kind of goes back to what I was saying. If if we're losing a lot of defense round, defensive rounds, if we're losing a lot of uh, these defensive rounds from people going fast. Because they're just literally straight up hitting the site for free and like winning the post plants. So this is just an option for EG. If they if they were losing, I'm not saying they were losing, but if they were losing, they could push up here with four people, and then Killjoy just puts utility here, and they play retake on B and C, right? That's an option. This is if they're losing, uh, 
to fast plays because we're reinforcing one area of the map. We're reinforcing this. We're taking the fight to them with four bodies. And we're trusting that we can retake these bomb sites. Should we play slower if we think that, or just trust that we can win against even four agents? So this is kind of going back to like what we think their the defense is going to do. Do we think they're going to play four here aggressively? Because then we can push C with four people and actually just take this deep uh, deep ground, just smoke this, and we actually fight CT, knowing that they put four here. If they're four here, they're not going to rotate this way. It makes zero sense. They're going to push through as four probably, or even three, three max. This is not necessarily how IGLs think, but this is kind of just what people should be thinking about in the mid round. So I'm Valorant because of, because of just how the game is, there's barriers that allow people to fight instantly, right? Whereas CS, you would spawn five here and five here, which the round time is very similar. So usually in CS, you would meet around probably like 120 taking this fight if this, if this was Counter-Strike. Now it's Valorant. You've won here, bury here. So literally within the first five to 10 seconds of each round, you can fight each other. And if there's fights that go down, and it's a three versus three, and you have you literally have a minute and like 35 seconds to do whatever you want across the whole map. That's why it's different from CS. In this game, a lot of it is mind games because you have the whole entire map to play with, especially on three, three uh, site maps. So, once like these fights happen, let's just read this, which is very problematic because of how aggressive people are. Instead of spawning specific, specific areas that we're talking about, the difference between this game and CS is in the mid round, you usually have a lot more time uh, to work the map. So this is exactly what we just talked about. So this is like a realistic scenario, right? This this is something that UG could encounter. And they're thinking, oh, let's go back to our checklist. Did we kill the A anchor? Did we kill the C anchor? We killed the A anchor, probably. We're going to assume they're going to rotate, probably. At least one guy here. There's one guy alive here. Killjoy's alive. Killjoy is going to be responsible for B and C. So they're instantly thinking these things, right? It's just like their internal clock and internal thought process of what they're thinking about. Um, where do we get the frags? It's relevant to this. Can we instantly take the site based on the agents we killed? Or should we reset and try to... Okay, so this point is basically... You get kills here. Like, say... Say you start, it's a 4v3. We know Killjoy C. We know there's probably a guy retaining CT. And then the other guy's probably missing. We don't know exactly where he started. It's an omen. And he flashed this earlier, but the door's not broken. So where is he rotating? He's rotating through CT. He's going this way. He could he could technically beat us to sight here. He throws a smoke here. But he's already in sight. So, do we want a 3v1 this guy? Where he potentially outplays us and gets two kills and we're in a 2v1? Or do we slow down? We have a minute and 35 on the clock. Do we want to rush into this guy? This omen, he still has paranoia. No, he doesn't have paranoia because he flashed early. He still has a smoke. He smoked this. Is it worth for us to rush in and potentially give this side two kills? Or another way to think about it is do we want to 3v1 this guy where he could be anywhere in this general area? And by the time we get this frag on this guy, there could already be a guy heaven, which is there to trade. So we got to think, what is the highest percentage chance of winning this round? It depends on who we kill and where we get kills, right? If we get kills in this area and we're here, yes, take the site. It's obvious, all right? It's very obvious to take the site. Also, you got to think about the abilities in this game. Most people at the beginning of each round, if you're playing a Sova especially, it's every 30 seconds or whatever, they're going to dart something. So that means by the time you get these kills, they're going to have another dart coming up in probably like 10 seconds. That's pretty scary to think about, right? So once you get into the mid round, someone needs to create a plan. Otherwise, Judy Jet walking up long, uh, mid alone, trying to fight the Omen 1v1. Killjoy's like, I got flank instantly for some odd reason at like a minute 35, even though he's a turret. Omen's opening the door and fucking trying to flash sight randomly like... If no one says anything, I guarantee you any money, there's going to be no connection between you and your teammates. So if someone needs to say something, whether it's like a, a word, freeze, or, or actually like, let's go, let's go. It doesn't matter who says it, you have to trust the first person that says it. Otherwise, it's going to be a clusterfuck.